Hi, so I just want to show you some of the stuff that's available at the moment. So here we have a nice patch of wild garlic. There's Luna, no Luna. So you can usually tell that it's wild garlic by the smell because when there's a lot of it, you really can, you really can smell it. Yeah. It has, this is how it looks on the back. You can see it's got this line predominantly going down the middle and then these lines in even spaces running down the back all the way to the tip and it's quite glossy I know it's got stuff on it so I wouldn't necessarily eat that or maybe with a good wash um, and yeah you can see these lines on the front as well and that predominant one right there down the middle it's got a kind of waxy finish but it's not as waxy as say bluebells which you should really avoid because people do tend to mix these up for some reason and if the garlic smells like coming through, you could give it a crush, give it a sniff, and you could really be able to tell. And it grows like this. It usually is all clustered together because it grows and spreads quite, quite well. And I'll show you what the plants look like individually when I find some that will help me show this. Continuing on then, here we've got some, you see these lovely yellow flowers? And their leaves. So this here, you can tell, it's got that lovely yellow circle around the middle, that lovely deep yellow, and then that very, very pale yellow flower. These are primroses, and both the flowers and the leaves are edible. Chuck them in a salad, is what I've done. These leaves here, these big broad leaves, or well, these veins down the back of it, and this predominant line down the middle, these can be eaten, it's sort of like a bitter lettuce. So wash them, dress them, put them in a salad, with maybe a bit of spinach and some other things. And a really nice edible there. Say hey Luna. Say hey Luna. Come on, we'll go this way. So I know we're in the midst of a uh, lockdown, but I were allowed one walk a day here in England. So my partner took Luna out this morning and I'm taking her out tonight. So I thought I'd film a walk in the woods. Now I have noticed that my camera's got really not very much battery, which is really unfortunate. Because I really wanted to show you some of the things you might find on a walk in the woods in England this time of year. What well, might be edible, and obviously species that are not. So, I mean, notably, you'll find that this time of year, spring, and lots of new things are growing, and shooting up everywhere. This down here, this veiny plant here, I think that's either Adam and Eve or Lords and Ladies. Oh, there's a little bee on there, I think. Hey, Mr. Bee. Anyway, so even though it looks a bit like dock leaves, they are not edible, so I wouldn't advise it. Something else that's popping up all over now. Is this, see, oh wow, look at that. Gorgeous. Monarch butterfly possibly. Oh. Anyway, what it landed near, and I'm trying to show you, without getting too close to the bees, of course. This here on the ground, I'm not gonna touch it, it's poisonous. I don't think to the touch, but still. This plant here, it's called Dog's Mercury, and apparently it's a sign of ancient woods, which makes sense for around here. And it's popping up really everywhere, but it's a sign that is, you know, apparently it's a sign that a lot's going to grow, or it's a place where wild garlic grows, and as I've just shown you, this is definitely one of those places. So as I continue around today, I'm going to be turning my camera off and on. Just trying to show you what you might find on a stroll through England's woods. Okay. Now I've spotted something over here. And these are useful if you're camping and you want to start a fire. 
Now, I've forgotten the right name, but I'll put it down. And it's known as the coal fungus. And you can snap that off, break up the inside, well, break up the outside. And on the inside, there's a substance that burns very much like coal. And you'll find this on a lot of the dead wood, dead trees growing. So that one could be very handy for you to know about. In fact, if I go camping this summer, I might try it myself, because I haven't yet. Now this one, I'm quite excited about, because I've noticed these lines over winter. And I've used an app, and one of the possibilities that this could be is a guillain tree, or guillain tree, and it's otherwise known as a cherry tree. Wild cherry. So we can notice we've got some flowers, um, some leaves rather, already starting to come out. And if it is a guillain tree or a cherry tree, by summer, by about June, we should start to see some ripe cherries. So we've got some more leaves here. So if anyone knows whether or not this is a guillain tree, please let me know. And otherwise, um, if you see these yourself, you can keep an eye on them. Because obviously, ah, what's that? Up the top there. Does that look like a blossom? Could that be a blossom? If it is a blossom, then I can't really see from down here. Then this is likely to be a guillain tree because cherry blossom is absolutely beautiful. So let's hope, fingers crossed, because there's a few of these in these woods and I would really, really like some cherries. So fingers crossed. So I don't know if I have enough battery left and I really, really hope so because we're about to reach one of the biggest things of wild garlic in these woods and it's it's gorgeous and I don't really want to stand on it but I want to take you to the middle so I'm trying not to stand on it as much as possible and it smells brilliant see all of this all of this is beautiful wild garlic and it smells really strong and I'm not surprised so my camera battery died, typical, but um, I remembered I've got my phone on me, which will be okay just to show you the rest of what I wanted to show you here. So, now this camera is not as good because it's a bit smashed at the back. Uh, the camera is a bit smashed, which is a real shame, but hopefully I'll be able to show you. So before I showed you exactly how to spot it, but you can see here that there's a lot of different leaves all at the same time. So what you're probably going to want to do is make sure leaf for leaf when you're either putting it in a bag or later when you're washing it that you have got the right thing. Now you can see Luna having the time of her life. I would try and stop her but this I could point. she doesn't understand wild garlic and grass I suppose. So she's going to stink of garlic later. That'd be fun for mummy. Hmm. Also check that you don't have eggs, someone told me the other day, that you can get snail eggs and slug eggs, they're like little white round things on each leaf, not on every leaf, but that's something to be aware of. And also you can see from, where are they, there were some leaves near me that were covered in what looks like bird poo, so <clears throat> definitely be prepared to wash everything before you eat it. Now each plant, this is an example of one plant, you see, they're all coming from one centre point. And that's how you can tell it's one plant. So if you're harvesting, obviously in a place like this you can take a lot of it, but just try and make sure you don't, well make sure you don't take all of the leaves from one plant, or it's likely that the plants will die and you won't get any more. Also, if you don't know Lando's owner's permission, don't try and dig for the bulbs. There's little point anyway. The leaves are very tasty and it won't grow back again next year. So there we go. There's the last little bit on wild garlic.
Now this bit I haven't got anything specific in mind to show you, but it's just a really nice look at these woods. I think it's really good for our mental health at the moment to use our one bit of exercise a day. And obviously if you're going to be foraging, not only does this give you something to do while you're out, it's also it's good for mindfulness, good for your mental health. And also, it means you don't have to be running off to the shops to make every single thing. You can find stuff here. Now this is a better example of what I tried to show you earlier. It's primrose. So you've got those lovely, lovely white yellow flowers. And these leaves, the bitter lettuce leaves, as I refer to them in my head. And both, all of that's edible. The leaves, the plant, everything. So they're great to go in a little salad if you get enough of them. I mean, they are, they are bitter. Well, you can mix these with dandelion leaves. I've done that before in a salad. And it's just a great way um, to pad out what stocks you've got in the shop. Here's Luna. Well done, I was just about to call for you. So, yeah, as I say, try and get out. See all this primrose here? Imagine if you were trying to get a lot of it. You can also use the primrose flowers to make a champagne. And there's so much of it here. I might actually do that next time. You having fun? Yeah? So yeah, you can use those flowers to make champagne. And I'll show you how to do that, as I say, maybe next time. Okay. Just if you needed to know, some very, very handy, very handily rather, we've got some dandelion. So, you can usually tell what dandelion is pretty easily. There's usually a flower here, but that's not present. So you've got all these lovely primrose, some dandelion. Of course, you can make a dandelion a burdock if you find some burdock. But I think dandelion leaves look a lot like rocket. And in fact, they're like a bitter, non-peppery rocket. Oh look, Luna's found a wild ball. Well done, Luna. Well done. So yeah, if you were looking, I've made a salad that's a bit like spinach and rocket. Well, a bit like a bitter lettuce and rocket salad base but you're going to want to dress it because as i say it doesn't taste quite as nice now while i'm at it this isn't the right season whatsoever you're not going to be able to get anything off this tree but just while i'm next to it you can see its buds starting to grow back if the camera focuses as i said my phone camera is really not very good but this is a cobnut tree otherwise known as an almond tree. And you can tell from these little dangly, dangly growing leaf things here. Yep, see it? Again, sorry for the camera. But this will produce a lot of hazelnuts when the time is right. And there are tons of them in these woods. Now oh, isn't that gorgeous, sir? Huh? Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, the cobnut tree. Something else I spotted. Hello. Something else I spotted as I walked down these steps is this. Now you can see you've got these fuzzy buds. I really wish this camera worked properly. Okay, fuzzy buds here. Maybe if we let it focus. Okay. Fuzzy buds yeah, here. And leaves growing and apparently this is a type of willow tree, not an edible. So if you think they look appetising, leave them be. If you want to have a little look, it's easier to typify something 
with its bark when it's a tree anyway alongside other things this is what the bark looks like so unless I'm mistaken which is very possible this is another tree again not edible so actually this is what I love about spring I don't know what this is but you see the way everything's just growing back against all this stuff that's dying and dead well dead I guess we get life coming again, and I love spring, it really is one of my favourite times. Down there we've got a very tiny purple flower, I don't know if you can see it. We've got all sorts, and it just, it just shows that soon everything's coming back to life. And I just, yeah, just really, really love it. <laughs> it's just my favourite thing. And this is why I'm devastated at this. Fire is just coming round in spring because I just love spring. It's not too hot to go on the bigger walks and it's not too hot for Luna because in winter it does get really hot. She can't go out, that's her. In the middle of the day, anyway. However, the good thing about this all coming down in spring is that, um, is that at least summer's on the way and hopefully it's going to kill off the virus. I don't know. Luna, no, your ball's over there. You want to go get your ball? Come on. You go get your ball. Also, there's not too many insects. Come on, bring it here. Come on. Clever girl, isn't she? She's smart. Right. Okay. Here we have a very common plant. I'm sure you all know it. Don't touch it. Okay. And I'm actually going to get some of this because tonight I'm going to create this recipe and these look quite fresh and you can use nettles for an awful lot. Yes, that's right. They are nettles. Now they sting. These ones I'm pretty sure are stinging nettles. You can get some called dead nettles that don't sting. Luna, stop eating the grass. Where's your ball? Anyway. And collecting nettles, obviously you're going to need gloves. You're going to need some sort of protection because otherwise you're going to get very badly stung and it's going to hurt. But nettles can be used in a whole lot of things. Nettle soup's really nice, and then this dish that I'm going to make tonight. So you can identify nettles quite easily from their triangular kind of leaves. Now I think I'm going to do this video again because literally everything I've tried to show you with this phone is just not not coming out well. As I said, the cameras are smashed. Um, but yeah, you can collect these. Not in massive quantities, I wouldn't say, because again, you can get stung. I mean, unless you're going to make soup with them. And this is going to go very well with, I can see actually what I'm going to collect down there. Um, I'm going to show you in a minute. But first, I'm going to put my gloves on, get my knife, my foraging knife. And put some of these nettles in a bag, ready for tonight's dish. So, along these two ridges is the last thing I want to show you. And there's some over here, and there's some over here. I'll try and get it over here because these look fresher, um, newer. But you might not be able to see because the sun, the sunlight, it's really shady over here. So you see these <sighs> tubular looking, funny looking things really, growing up out of the ground. Wait for my camera to focus. If it ever does, I'm really gonna have to try and shoot this again. So I'm really sorry about this. But I'm gonna pick these and I'm gonna use it in a recipe uh, tonight and I'm gonna film it on my camera. So if you can't see this here, check out that video um, because you'll be able to see it properly. But these funny looking things are called horsetail. I think this is common horsetail. You can also get river horsetail. And what you can do with these, they are highly nutritious and they're actually eaten in spring as a delicacy in Japan and Korea. So when you get one that's, if it started to go too brown on top, then their palatability really, really decreases rapidly. So I'm gonna try and find one that's quite fresh, quite new. Now, 
This one here is probably one of the freshest ones. It's too little really, but if I cut it, okay. Now, here we go. Right. So can you see the way, because oh, my camera, These tubes, oh, this is so annoying. Kind of grows and overtakes the head there. And this does peel off if I put this away. You can see that this peels down. You can get that off. Revealing a very green, fertile shoot. So there's two things you can pick with this. There's a vegetative shoot and there's a fertile shoot. And this here is a fertile shoot. And this really is a, a really good example of the type that you want to get. Because once they've started to brown, apparently their delectability really goes down. But I couldn't find any of these the other day. And I did actually eat some that looked more like this. And that was totally fine. They're really highly nutritious. You shouldn't eat too much because there is some um, something that shows that in, for instance, if you are an alcoholic, they can give you dermatitis, which is kind of skin thing. But generally, they're eaten in spring. Lovely vegetative, um, fertile shoots. And... Um, Still trying to get a good look at this. I know it's my phone camera. And I'm always tempted not to upload this because of the quality, but it's been quite a lovely walk. As I say, if you want to check these out properly when it's not all fuzzy and horrible, what you do, I'll show you tonight in this thing I'm making. So this thing comes off to reveal this hollow, juicy plant and that can be boiled or fried and it makes a really, really tasty I can make really, really tasty meals but I wouldn't eat too much of it because it is actually that high in nutrients um, I think it's something like that I'll look it up before I make this video tonight but that is edible, fertile shoots of horsetail this is the last thing of the day that I want to show you. This is three-cornered leek. It looks a lot like grass, but it's a type of allium. And allium is the species name for onion. It's a type of wild onion. It can be used a lot like spring onion. And it's actually an invasive species. So if you want to get the bulbs, you can actually pickle the bulbs to make pickled onion. Um, and you can, you can dig some of it up without worrying too much. Because as I say, it's an invasive species. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my knife out. Okay. okay, so. You can tell it's three-cornered leek. There's not as strong a smell as the wild garlic. And bear in mind the wild garlic is also a type of allium. But you can tell um, because, let me just grab this bit. I've actually made a short video about this before, but I don't think I put it up. Um, so here is the three cornered leek. And it's called that because you, you, it's got very clearly defined three corners. Again, it's a stupid camera, but it's got this ridge on the outside. The ridge in the middle, very, very... You can... It's, it's always in this shape, even if you squish it. And then you've got the ridge on the outside. If you hold it up to your nose and give it a good sniff, it is going to smell like onion. And again, if you're really unsure, you give it a crush between your fingers, sniff it, and it should become a lot more apparent. So here is three-cornered leek. One of the other ways that you can tell if this is definitely it, well, up here you can see we've actually got the flowers forming. Again, like... Wild garlic, uh, the, the other type of allium, the ransoms, that does flower, but the flowers are different. These look a little bit 
like bluebells, except of course they're white. And this, this plant is actually very, the leaves, if there's no flowers on, you can confuse a bluebell, but bluebells are a bit wider and a bit thicker and a bit more waxy. It's a general rule of thumb, if something's really waxy like that, don't eat it, because bluebells are poisonous to humans. So the other way, as I was going to say, but you can tell if this is what you think it is. Um, now something has crushed this where I'm stood, but you can see here, it starts to look, it starts to resemble a spring on you and the closer down you get. You can also see, maybe very faintly, that little white thing there. That's actually a little snail. And I've actually like, accidentally brought a little snail back home with me. And I felt really bad to taking it out of its environment. So basically to tell that it's what you think it is, if you hold... Oh, I'll have to show you. So I used my knife to sort of cut down on the grass and then I yanked. And this is a way you can uproot it quite easily. You see here, you got these little bulbs, and that's a bulb, but it's covered in covered in dirt and the roots. So as I said, it's a type six invasive species, and people actually pay a lot to get rid of these types of invasive species. So I don't feel bad about ripping it out. But under UK law, it's illegal to remove the roots of a plant without permission. But because this is invasive, I'm not really bothered. But this is where it really starts to resemble the spring onion, and actually, it smells a lot more strongly now I've done this. But again, just be careful that you haven't got any animals with it. Ah, see? Little animal. Sorry, little animal. Just pop you back down there. Okay. As I said in my introduction to foraging video, just be very mindful that you are in the, the environment. That's It's not really ours. There's going to be animals. There's going to be other things. You have to be very respectful and... Make sure you're not ruining something. But if you want to pickle the onions, it's actually best to wait until it starts to flower. And I'm going to show again when all of this is flowering because the bulbs are bigger and they're a lot easier to... Well, there's more to pickle. I'm going to show you that later, but essentially that's the last thing I'm going to show you today. Um, and check in later, I'm going to use this and the last two things I've foraged for to make a delicious meal. Um, so I'll see you then.